Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today what we're looking at is universal platform of movements. What this is, is a bunch of, uh, well actually only one script, um, that I use a lot actually in different platformer games because it is actually really really useful. It can be used in pretty much any situation where you need platformer movement and works really well, very efficient and allows you to tackle all kinds of problems like slopes, uh, of you know, even it even allows for collision uh, for precision precise collision checking, um, which means you can have some curved slopes, etc. It is really a nice script. So let's have a look at the basic uh, way it works. So say you just have a simple platform over here and your character. What you can do is first move him upwards a certain amount of pixels, then move him to the right for whatever speed you want to go and move him back down until he hits the floor for a certain amount of pixels, maximum pixels as well. Now, here you go, he moves to the right. You may ask, why would you do such a thing? Why not just move him to the right? Well, again, we want this to be able to you, to tackle slopes. So, uh, here you go, we have the slope. If we move him upwards again, and then, uh, just like before, move him to the right a certain number of pixels, and then move him back down until he hits the floor, what we get is that he will stop um, higher up the slope because there is something blocking him. And so what we basically got is him being able to move up the slope. And we can just simply repeat the process to move uh, above different slopes. Now, the amounts um, for which you move up will determine the well greatest slope you can um, climb and the amount you move to the right or to the left will affect how fast your character will move. So without further ado, let's check in Game Maker how we can accomplish this. Alright, now that we're in Game Maker, let's have a look at how we actually implement this with code. So here I have a very basic project. All I have are two objects, two sprites, and one room. So um, I have the first sprite, which is just my character sprite. Um, and what we want to make sure with this one is that if we go in a modify mask, we want to select the ellipse option. Uh, this is because we want to have a, a very small surface as to where we actually collide with the floor to make sure uh, that when we actually hit the uh, floor uh, it is the bottom of our feet, the center of our sprite, which actually is at uh, touching the floor, not the front of it, not the back of it, etc. Uh, it is also very important because um, the whole system relies uh, that relies on moving up, down and uh, up, left, right and back down will not work very well if you have a, a square sprite because um, it will actually detect a collision when you're moving right and not moving at all. Uh, so it's best to select uh, the ellipse um, collision mask. So we can just simply press OK, you can center it if you like and then move to our block object. So this uh, block sprite, should I say, this one we're not changing anything to. Uh, I'm just centering it so I can do a few neat things with it. Um, and that is it. Uh, our two objects then. We have the player object, which right now is empty. It just contains a sprite. And our block object, which is also empty. It just contains a sprite. The only thing we want to change with it is make sure we select solid over here underneath the sprite selection. Uh, this uh, doesn't do much apart from uh, making it uh, having a tag of solid, which means certain functions um, will interact with it differently. Um, than other objects which are not text solid. Uh, this is going to be used to differentiate between objects which we uh, can walk on, which we can physically hit with our player, and other objects such as, I don't know, bullets or other characters which we do not want to, you know, which we don't want to behave as terrain. If we could step on bullets, for example, uh, it wouldn't be the best thing, although you may want your game to work that way. And uh, finally we have the room, which is just a very simple level like so. Um, for those of you who may not know, I rotated these blocks simply by going inside the object panel. Here on the right, you can actually choose different rotation settings, so I could change this to 15 for example, uh, or even 45, and as you can see it changes the angle um, over here. Let me check that up to 20. And um, down here, I scaled these objects quite in a similar way. Over here you have a, a nice... Um, uh, and I, nice options for X and Y as well. I also managed to place these correctly even though I have a snap of 16 by holding down the ALT button when dragging them around. This allows you to have a no snap um, and having per pixel placement, which is rather nice. So let's 
quit out of that room and go inside our player object. So before we start writing all our code, etc., we want to add a few variables uh, that we're going to use throughout the project. So first we're going to create uh, a create event and drag in a piece of code. This is going to be called our um, movement variables. So uh, the first thing we want to um, define is our speed. So movement m underscore speed. M speed is going to be the speed at which we can move. We want to set this to around 8 is a good value for the size of the sprites we chose. Um, the next one is going to be the uh, height at which you can move up and down uh, between each movement, uh, between, between moving right and left, depending on your direction. Um, the greater that value is, um, the how big of the slopes you can um, go up. And we're going to call this M step. And we're going to set that to 20. Uh, 20 is quite a large number, but it will make sure that we can, uh, we can play around at our level without having too many problems. Generally speaking, uh, you don't want to have it you, you can have it very high or your levels work normally apart from the fact you may be able to step over some ledges which you would not normally have to step over so it, it depends entirely on your levels and on the type of game you're developing so we're going to press ok over here and add in a piece of code this is going to be a step and step now the reason we are using the end step event is because we're going to be using vSpeed uh, as a variable um, and vSpeed is a built-in variable that uh, will add itself to your y coordinates every step. So say your vSpeed is uh, at 15, for example, you'll move 5 pixels down um, the y coordinates every single step. And GameMaker does that for you, which is rather nice. Um, actually, just to make sure we do things properly, we can here add vSpeed is equal to zero. Now this is not strictly speaking necessary because, um, well by default it is, but it's just better practice to set it, uh, you know, to set in our create events. We're also going to have some gravity, so actually we need to, we'll set this now even though we could do it later, and I'm just going to call this m underscore gravity is equal to one. Now we could use a default gravity, however we need it to be applied at some very specific moments, so actually setting it ourselves is uh, safer because uh, depending on when game maker were actually um, uh, assigned uh, apply the gravity it may interfere with our code if it's not set in the right place so let's go back to our end step event which we created just two seconds ago again it has to be end step make sure it's not step or begin step uh, and let's add a piece of code this is going to be our movement so the first thing we want to do is uh, apply our gravity. So what we're going to do is vSpeed plus is equal to m underscore gravity. Next, we want to check if we're moving left or not. So are we pressing the left key on our keyboard? So we're just going to use the normal arrow keys that are um, on our keyboard just because they're easy to use. Uh, you could set that to another key you like. Um, or any other condition if you want some different control schemes if you're on mobile for example you may want to use a, a d-pad of some sort so we're just going to go um, for our purposes in the computer if keyboard keyboard if I can spell if keyboard check vk underscore left so if we're uh, pressing the left key uh, first of all, we want to move upwards. Remember our small algorithm showed that if we can move, uh, we have to move first upwards, then left, then back down. So what we're going to use is a function called move contact solid. Let me type that down. Move contact. So this function will take two variables, two arguments. The first is direction, and the second is maximum distance that this function will move you by. So what this function will do, basically speaking, is uh, move, you, um, move you up a certain amount of pixels until it hits a, a wall. So um, to be more precise, it will move you up one pixel, check if there's a collision. If there isn't a collision, it will move you another pixel, check if there's a collision once more. If not, move you, etc, etc. And it will do so for whatever uh, distance you set it to. So what we want to do is move 
in the upwards direction, which happens to be 90, and we want it to move, well, m underscore step pixels up. m step. And now we want to use the exact same function, but this time we want to move to the left. So um, the angle we're going to use therefore is 180, because that is towards the left, and we're going to use a maximum distance of m speed. Now what we want to do is move back down. So we're going to use move contact solid 270, which is downwards, and the maximum distance of m step. This means that we will um, well move down until we hit a slope, for example, meaning that we'll not move, we'll move up, for example, 20 pixels, and move back down maybe only 10 pixels uh, if there's something in the way. If there's nothing, if it's flat, we'll just move 20 more pixels down. The last thing we want to add inside this if statement is image underscore x scale is equal to minus 1. What this does is set well, your x scale to minus 1, and the x scale um, is, based, is you know, the scaling of the sprite. If you set it to 2, it will be twice as big. If you set it to minus 1, it will flip. And uh, by flipping it along the x-axis, um, basically what we get, well, by flipping the x-axis along the y-axis, I should say, what we get is um, it facing left instead of right. What I'm going to do now is the exact same thing for the right. And because it's so similar, all I'm going to do is copy and paste this code to the, uh, underneath and change VK left to VK right and change our 180 over here to um, 0. And our image X scale should be 1 so that we face the right. So this is it for the basic movement. Uh, let's press OK and save. And let's add another event. This time it will be a collision event because we still haven't told the game how to collide with the blocks. And uh, this is actually really, really simple. All we want to do is add a piece of code and say vSpeed is equal to zero. So basically saying if you're hitting some block, we don't want you to be moving downwards anymore. It's not possible. You're just not moving anymore. And then we want to move it downwards. Now we're moving it downwards for two reasons. The first is sometimes collisions, you can get um, some strange ghosting effect where you're, you're, you're kind of float above the block. Uh, it happens with different systems, not sure if it would happen with this one. However, there's more important reason, and that is if you uh, hit the top of a block, if you set v-speed v to zero every time, you won't be moving downwards anymore, and what you end up with is uh, your character is sticking to the top. So what you want to do is just move him downwards a bit, just to make sure he isn't, uh, well, sticking to the ceiling. And what we're going to use is move, contact, solid, and we're just going to use uh, a direction of 270 for downwards, and a maximum distance of 12, for example. You could set this to smaller. You have to experiment depending on your levels, once again. Um, if you set it to too high, then you, you'll see your character kind of not bumping his head when he jumps, for example, he'll kind of uh, stop for uh, 12 maybe a little much, but we just want to stay on the safe side. So let's press OK and save again because we've got quite a few crashes recently. And let's play the game and see if it will work properly. Uh, this is the second time I'm recording because last time it didn't work quite as planned, but this time seems like it's working just like it should. And as you can see, I can move left and right, I do not go through walls. Um, moving up slopes works really nicely. You can see a bit of jumping, however, uh, this can just be solved just by, um, oh, you could increase, um, you could decrease your, your size and increase FPS. There's a, quite a few different techniques, I'm sure you can figure them out. Uh, and then uh, I can obviously fall down here. Now what's interesting is with this method, it allows you to go uh, downstairs obviously, but also up them. They don't have to be perfect slopes, so long as um, the height of the steps are actually smaller than your own step, you can go up them and that's quite nice because it allows you to have this nice little stepping effect which uh, I think is rather cool. So let's have a look at how we can implement some jumping now. Uh, jumping is actually really quite simple. Let's uh, quit the game and go back into the end step event inside the movement. So uh, jumping, all we have to do is set the v-speed to a negative value. So we're saying you're actually moving upwards now. So what you want to do is first check if you're actually uh, holding down a key. So if keyboard check pressed, 
let me spell this correctly, keyboard check pressed vk up. Now, we are using something different. Instead of just using keyboard check, we're using keyboard check pressed because uh, we, we just want it to jump once when you press the key. We don't want it to keep bouncing like uh, some games do. You may, however, you may want to change that depending on your game. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I just want it to press once, jump once. And now I'm going to add another piece of code. If you're in the middle of the air, you cannot jump. You can only jump if there's something uh, underneath you. So what I'm going to do is add a small if statement. If uh, there isn't place free, a place that's free, right below you, so at position x, y plus 1, then I can jump. So v speed is equal to, uh, let's say, m underscore jump. Now m jump we haven't defined yet, so we're just going to go and create event and do so. But before we'd like to talk about place free, place free will basically tell you if um, at position x, y, which you define, there is a uh, if there is a solid block or not. Um, we're putting like an exclamation point in front of it to reverse the value. So we're basically saying if we do not have a free place at position y, x, y plus 1. So now we just have to go into the create event and define m jump because we set it down there. And we're just going to say m jump is equal to minus 15. Sounds about right um, for this game. So we can just press OK, save again, and press play. And what we should have now is the ability to jump up when you press the up key, only when you're hitting the floor. And as you can see, it works really nicely. Um, you can move up, up all of these stairs, jump up, and um, yeah, this is really quite a simple system. It's actually a really nice system, really robust, and um, as you can see, I don't clip through some walls. However, you do see that I stuck quite harshly against the top there. That is because my um, value, uh, remember uh, the value of 12 inside my, coll my collision, may have been a little uh, too big. This is basically it for uh, the movement uh, platform and movement tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Uh, if you have, please like and subscribe if you want to see more, if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time for some more tutorials. Yeah.